going on guys today in the shop we got my 2017 dodge ram it's got the 57 hemi and it's got the infamous hemi exhaust tick we're going to fix that today so let's get it up on jack stands get it pulled apart and i'll be right back with you Hang all on. right got the wheel off what we're going to do bust out all these bolts here and get this inner fender liner out that's where we can get to the exhaust manifold right there so hang tight all right so 10 8 millimeter screws all the way around and three of the little christmas tree plastic push-in deals we'll get the wheel well liner out so now we can come down here and see what we got i have a feeling that i have a broken bolt on the back back here that's where i've been hearing all the noise well well you can see that that ain't holding nothing and the head snapped right off of it so we definitely got a broken bolt there uh two 14 millimeter bolts back here holding the collector to the y pipe or the manifold to the y pipe uh 10 millimeter bolts on the exhaust manifold i believe there's 10 of them so all right so four 10 millimeters in the corners i only had to take three because lucky me i got a broken bolt all right we can see right there got a broken bolt but it looks like it broke off flush with the manifold so i might get lucky might get lucky still letting these uh 14 mils soak in uh they are tight and they do not want to come loose so we'll uh we'll start going around gonna use uh hand tools and if they're tight and don't want to come loose just go to another one because what these cast iron manifolds do is they warp. That's what broke this bolt right here. So uh, just hang tight and we'll be back here in a minute. Time check, 8.53 and she is loose, finally. All right, what you didn't just see is me hanging on to the exhaust like an ape because my stud's sticking out. But we finally got it loose. Here she is. So now let's work on getting that stud out. All right, what I'm gonna try first, this is a stud extractor. Means this thing didn't break off at the head. I should be able to use it. Oh. So what you do is you'll just slide that up over the stud right there. You can either use a half inch uh, wrench or, or half inch drive, so, uh, ratchet wrench I mean, or a, uh, this is a 21, so what is that, like a three quarter or something. Oh, my fingers are retarded. There we go. Ha ha, how lucky was that? All right, well, let's go meet up on the bench and show you what I'm gonna do to fix this. So machine straight edge. And I don't, man, I mean, it's, it is bowed. I don't know if you can see that. Let me see if I can zoom in on something here. Now watch it when it goes down. So what had happened, let's zoom out. What happens is the, the ends, they always tend to bow this ways. You got more heat concentrated in the middle and they bow. So what I got over here is a El Cheapo, I'll sit you on this side so the desk don't get you. El Cheapo Harbor Freight Special. 4x36 belt sander. Bigger would be better, but for 77 bucks versus uh, 250 for the next size up, we'll work with this one. So I got a brand new 50 grit 
Diablo belt on it. So it should be okay. What we're gonna do is uh, turn the belt sander on, lay this thing flat, grind it, you know, just work it back and forth. You can probably see how how bad it is if I just do this for a second. Really touching. It's already hitting the ones in the middle here. It's not really touching the outer ones, so we're gonna put some juice to this thing and uh, bump it a few times. Note to self, I probably uh, should have got a 36 grit. The 50's doing it, but it's slow. But, we are flat. I mean, if you want to get critical, we got about a five, not even five thousandths gap. I think the gasket can take care of that. So, let's uh, wash this thing up. That's good. And I have to do it by hand. All right, so here it is after uh, a bath and a blow job. Can I say blowjob? Here it is after a bath and uh, blowing it off. How about that? So it's uh, it's pretty dang flat. We'll uh, we'll get a little cinematic here. Yeah, there's a little bit of a gap on this side, but the gasket will take care of it. We're we're within a couple thousands. It looks worse on camera, and it's like that all the way across, obviously. So. Good enough, that's why they make gaskets. Let's get it back on. All right, so while the air compressor's going off, let's quickly run over uh, what the parts we're gonna need to put this pig back together. So the ARP manifold bolts, the kit for this thing is $70 for 16 bolts. $70 for 16 bolts. But what you can do is get you some eight millimeter 30 millimeter underhead length bolt packs. Here's a part number. And uh, get five of them. That's 20 bolts. You only need 16, so you get four extras. And as far as gaskets, uh, we're running with the Felpro MS97083. Also went to the hardware store and picked up uh, some 5 16 nuts just in case I had to weld them onto a broken bolt. Hadn't had to yet. Fingers crossed on the driver's side. And I got some 5 16 lock washers. 5 16 8 millimeter, close enough. It's a washer, so it'll work. So uh, let's go on and try to get this thing back on the passenger side and get to working on the driver's side. Well, we got a problem. Remember when I said uh, an ARP bolts are supposed to be 30 millimeter underhead length? Here's what came out of it. And here is what I got. Not even close. So, all right, so remember when I said that you needed a 30 millimeter underhead length? You really need a 50, so. Luckily, we are local to a Summit Racing, so got somebody going and getting some bolts. So I'm gonna press on and start taking apart the driver's side. I'm gonna take a minute and explain what I had to do on the driver's side, because it wasn't really shown very well in the video that I did get while I was doing this truck. 
undoing everything was the same as the passenger side. Only difference being you got to deal with the steering shaft that's coming down and also the oil dipstick. You did have to take the oil dipstick out. It's just two 10 millimeter bolts. You just unbolt it from the front exhaust manifold bolt and also there's a bolt down on the block that you just undo and then it slides out with some o-rings. So not that bad. Once you get the manifold loose you can pull it off the block and slide it down towards the firewall in between the frame and the block and bell housing and it slides down you just take it down and you can get it out that way. Time check 203 Got the gasket on, got two bolts on the two holes that have the slots. We're about to slide the manifold up in here. One trick that I would want to have knowledge of before I had to learn it on my own would be to take loose your collectors from your Y pipe on both sides before you even start dealing with the manifolds. I left the driver's side connected while I did the passenger side and it got the Y pipe kind of bound up while I was putting on the passenger side and uh, it, it just made it more of a pain than it should have been so if you need a tip there it is alright so 432 and this thing is finally done wasn't too bad of a job but certainly don't want to have to do it again we're doing the uh, heat shield delete everything's tight we're going to start it up won't hold the camera. Well, never mind the rod knock. The exhaust leak is what we were trying to fix. He's pretty funny, isn't he? Alright, but this was the bad side over here. pretty flat. We're going to let it warm up, go through a heat cycle, go come back and see if anything loosens up, put the wheel wells in it, take it for a drive. As I mentioned a few times in the video, uh, I basically did this entire truck with just some simple hand tools. Had a 10 millimeter wrench, 10 millimeter deep and shallow socket or ratchet, some extensions. Uh, you also need a 13 millimeter for the eight Four on either side, bolts that have the studs that hold on your heat shields, those are 13s. You'll need a deep well for that. And a 14 millimeter for the collector to the Y pipe. Uh, that's really the only tools you need. You'll also, well, for the manifolds, that's all you need. To get the inner fenders out, you need a uh, 8 millimeter or 5 16 socket uh, and a body panel tool. You can easily do it with just hand tools and uh, nothing fancy. Alright guys, that's all I got for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have to do this on your truck, don't be scared of it. It's not that bad. If you would, consider subscribing down below and hitting that like icon. It'll help us out. We're going to have some cool stuff coming up this summer. So stick around and we'll see you next time.